All right, we are here at my Urban Worm Bag. The last time we were here, we set it up all the way from taking it out of the box to putting our first feeding in and adding the worms. So as you can see right here, we have something unusual here. Now this is a sensor for a new thermometer that I have. So I'm gonna take this out. And what I wanted to show you is that it tells us the temperature. We've got 75 degrees in there and I've got actually a couple other sensors. So I'm just gonna get back to our current sensor. And since I've put it in here, the maximum temperature it has been is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and the minimum has been 51 degrees Fahrenheit. I can also change it to Celsius. So there is 24 degrees and 32 degrees Celsius. And there we go. So this little thermometer is gonna help me figure out what the temperature is at all times. And all it does is it sends a signal so I can have this in the house while that sensor is still in here. But all those temperatures that you saw were with the sensor on the outside. What I'm gonna do after we feed is I'm gonna bury the sensor inside because I think what happens is there's an air pocket that has a higher temperature than what it is down there. So when we set things up last time, we put a lot of bedding. In fact, we put some cardboard tubes and we put the shredded bedding on the bottom and then we put down our feeding and then we put even more on top and we added about 1500 worms. So what I'm gonna do is kind of dig in here and see how they're doing. Now we put in some pumpkin and we put in some other food scraps and I expect them to be all over the feeding zone here because the feeding zone is much wider than any of my other bins. And here is the piece of cardboard that we had baited them out in. And I'm just gonna kind of make it a little bit smaller. And what I'm looking for right now is just to see the worms in there happy and healthy because it did get up to 91 degrees inside this bin. And the reason it did that is because the sun actually hits the bin for about four to five hours a day. So what I've done is I've taken a tarp and I've kind of put a shade over it and that helped to keep it in about the mid 80s. So I think things are gonna work out there. Now this bin is on my back lanai and there is an overhang over it. So the weather isn't gonna to get to it. It's just kind of the sun that could be an issue. So the worms are doing great. You can see they're all throughout here. And I think we put in about 1500 and it's a mix of both red wigglers and blue worms. So this is gonna be a great little mix that's just gonna burn through food scraps and shredded cardboard for me. So I'm really excited about this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make kind of a shallow area where I'm gonna put the food down and then we're gonna put a lot of cardboard on top. So that's really good that there is no food that I can see. So I can give them a kind of a big feeding for only 1500 worms. And these first few feedings, I'm gonna add a lot of bedding. And that's because I wanna get the volume up. The first few harvests that you do in this bin really need to be added right back to the top because the worms probably aren't gonna be able to get all the way down there. They are gonna keep rising as we add more food and bedding in. So here's what we had in mind to feed. Now it's been in the freezer, so you see some frost on it. This is a mango that I've put some knife slices through, so they should be able to get to it. And then we also have some pumpkin right here, and this will help wet down the food. And then the rest is just an assortment of banana peels, strawberry tops, and it looks like we have a whole, actually two bananas in here, and I'm gonna skip out on giving them both of them. I'll just give them one. So let's go ahead and dump that in and kind of spread it around. And right now I'm just kind of feeding in the center, but I'm thinking as we start doing some more feedings, we'll be putting on the side, that kind of thing. And I'm gonna put this right in there and we'll set that right there. So next we'll go ahead and put in some worm chow. And I just wanna mention that I got a lot of great comments, a lot to do with the straps and the structure. And some people even made their own frames for their urban worm bag. And this is the urban worm bag version 2.0. So they, I think they've made a little bit of improvements to it. But one of the things I plan on doing is harvesting this probably a little bit more regularly. I don't think you'll ever see me get all the way to the top full of bedding and castings with this. I'll probably continuously harvest it. And it's going to take me a little while to kind of figure out how much this can produce castings for me. So those were coffee and tea grounds. And now I'm going to put in some eggshell grit. And that's just to help them with their digestion. Now I'm six foot tall. You kind of see some of a cloud here. I'm not breathing this in, so no worries there. You don't wanna breathe that into your lungs. So I've got our little thermometer sensor wrapped in this plastic just because I don't want the worms to get in it. The sensors actually also will tell you the humidity in it, but I'm thinking because it's in plastic, they're not gonna do that. So I'll put that right there. I expect it to go down pretty low just because some of this food is frozen, but we're gonna add a whole lot of bedding. I'm just gonna put some of the initial bedding in here and then we'll add some more. 
All right, so in goes a lot more bedding. And one of the things that I saw throughout the week as I was checking on it was as time went on, the bedding that was on top got moist. Now I didn't come in here and dig, I just kind of lifted up the newspaper and I would see some of the worms squeal down, but the newspaper had gotten wet and moist. So I'm not too worried about this being dry right now. So we'll just keep adding a little bit more, actually really a lot more, because I also want to make sure the food is buried. Since we are on my lanai, it is a transition to outside when we open the screen doors. And occasionally I'll see some gnats, that kind of thing in here. So if I see any of those inside this bin, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe use some BTI solution or something to make sure that I don't have any fungus gnats or fruit flies in this bin. So we'll do a little bit more around the outside. There we go. And my prediction at this center area where all the food is will kind of shrink down and the sides will be up a little bit. So I appreciate all the comments that I've been getting. Keep them coming because this is just my second time feeding my urban worm bag. It's been eight days and I'm learning a lot as we go. And over the next weeks and months, I'm gonna be learning even more and I really appreciate all those comments. And the executive producer and I are also getting used to the camera angles, that kind of thing. So you may see some, some differences with the videos as we come up, as we just get kind of settled and figuring out this bin. So I hope you're all having a good day. I hope your worm bins are doing good. So half of them are composting, everybody. Take care now. Do you wanna talk and I dig around? <laughs> I'm shorter. Yeah.